Hello everybody, Slickframe James here, back with a brand new artist interview. Today we're going to be uh, looking at some speed art of these two new backgrounds that one of the newest artists made. His name is Devin. How you doing today, Devin? I'm doing alright. I've got a half full thing of Dr. Pepper right here, so that should give me a bit of a pep. <laughs> Put a little That's pep good. in your step. Also, I'm here too. Hi! Yeah, so Jason's here too. Uh, the reason Jason's here is because he also worked on uh, one of these backgrounds we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, you doing good today, Jason? Yep, yep. I've got a little, I've got a little Gatorade here myself, Arctic Blue. You guys have much more exciting drinks than I do. I just got plain water. Hey, it's just a little something to wet my, my whistle while we're talking. <laughs> That's my good stuff. <laughs> I got that reference. I do not get that reference. But anyways, we're going to uh, get to know Devin a little bit better today. So, uh, Devin, uh, go ahead and uh, why don't you tell us about yourself? Where are you from? What was your childhood like? And how long have you been drawing for? I'm from Idaho Falls. I've been here for years upon years and uh, had a, I don't know if you call it standard childhood. Uh, been living with my parents for a number of years and uh, let's see, yeah, as far as drawing is concerned, yeah, I've just been doing that pretty much as long as I can remember as soon as like, like I figured out how to put crayon on paper. I mean, I've always had a talent for it, but it wasn't until, like, high school and I was, like, arrogant enough to say, hey, I can just be a cartoonist on the high school newspaper that I saw my work in print and was like, oh my gosh, I need to work on my art talent a bit. I need it. Because this looks terrible in print. So that's about the time I started taking art seriously. Uh, yeah, I went to college for a degree in uh, art sort of a focus on illustration, and I've been doing freelance for a couple of years now. Okay, um, and do you have any hobbies aside from drawing and video games? Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of like, if it's not one thing, it's the other. Like, I honestly don't get out much, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Neither do I these days. It, like, it's nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> yeah, well, you're preaching to the choir there, bub. Yeah, well, most of my time, like, if it's not working on my own stuff, it's like, like, it's usually, like, just making sure the dogs are walked. My gosh, it's like, I miss having people to my own age to hang out with, honestly. Yeah, it's it's called being a grown-up. Uh, unfortunately, getting older and not having school to, like, bring you all together, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, enjoy your youth while you can, kids. So, uh, what was your first video game, Devin? D or do you have a first Nintendo game? Well, uh, I remember getting the Game Boy Color way back in the day, and with that came Pokemon Red. So, yeah, Pokemon's been, like, the focus of my, like, video game name interests, even to this day. Uh, I did also have, like, the uh, Game Boy Color version of uh, Super Mario Bros., like, the deluxe version. I remember playing that a lot as a kid. Pokemon was always the big focal point when it came to video games. Like, it's not that I haven't played any other video games. Like, I have played, like, uh, Star Wars Old Republic until I decided to uninstall it. Just to be able to save space on my PC. Our household, we, we were, we grew up poor a lot of the time. Uh, so, there were, like, aside from the Game Boy consoles, there weren't any, really, like, uh, major, like, hook em up to the tv type consoles so, until, like, we tried out a Wii U, and even then that kind of fell to the wayside. But not a Wii U, just just the regular Wii. Yeah, other than that, we, like, if there was ever a chance we got to play, like, PlayStation or something like that, it was always over, like, a friend's house or something, but yeah, it was... So, I guess you could say your experience with the Nintendo consoles fell to the Wii side? Jason, think about what you just said. I'm starting to regret bringing him on. I forgot what he does. <laughs> He's been working for you for how long now? I I, I have a horrible memory. What can I say? Uh, so I w would you say more Super like Mario Bros. A, more like you have a horrible memory. Oh my! So Devin, uh, which uh, Mario game would you say is your favorite then? Okay, well there is like the Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. That was always a good time, but like I think. I think between them, it's a toss-up between, like, uh, like the, oh, boy, Super Mario World? Yeah, that's it. And, uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, Super Mario Bros., I did have a lot of fun with that, but Mario World, that was the one where it was like, we get a dinosaur! Yes! <laughs> that's right, you, you sure do love your dinosaurs, so that makes sense. 
And I don't understand people would <laughs> sacrifice Yoshi. In my playthroughs, I always try to preserve the little guy for as long as I can. Oh, like same a, here. I was like, why would well, you? <laughs> well, I mean, that's good. But it, there, I remember there is at least one or two goalposts. Um, there's there's one secret exit in one level that you can't guess get to unless you sacrifice Yoshi. And or it's maybe if terrible. you're really good with the cape, I don't know. And it's a terrible <laughs> sacrifice. How dare they? So then, um, what software do you use for your art? Uh, my software is primarily Procreate on the iPad. So, like, it's probably the... It feels like the most native to me. Like, the majority of my, uh, like, all my life I've been drawing all, like, out of sketchbooks and stuff. So, it feels like the closest analog to it. I've tried, like, Photoshop, and uh, I've done, like, one or two things with Clip Studio, but, like... Like, if, ever since I got my iPad back in college, like, uh, Procreate has been my go-to. Like, the one I'm most comfortable with. Yeah, I understand that. It, it's using an actual tablet. It's probably, like, the closest thing you can get to uh, just having a, a notepad on your lap to just sketch with a pencil and paper. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the reason that I uh, brought you on this show, Devin, is because... Uh, I wanted a brand new background for the show. Just so everybody knows, Devin is also working on a character for Ask Mario right now, and we don't want to give away who it is, but uh, I can't remember, was it the background that I had you do first, or was it this character that I had you do first? I'm having a hard time remembering. Uh, well, as I recall, uh, Jason was originally working on the background for the stage, and uh, something came up, and he, like, he got the line work down, but he wasn't able to pull through because of personal issues, so, if I recall, he called me on, like, and said, Hey, uh, you know, I got some, th like, we could use help with. Do you think you got a moment to talk to this guy? I was like, mm, all right, I got nothing else to do. I got no day job right now. And so, they took a look, and it looked pretty simple at first. It was just, like, the black and white stage, like, hey, can you go in and color this? Then it just kept expanding from there, and, like, somewhere along the line, one of your previous artists, like, had to drop out. You know, they were saying, hey, could you fill in this one last emo for them? I said, all right. And then you brought up this other seeker character. You know, I've been working on that ever since. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, uh, Yeah, you, you're taking over Donkey Kong now because of uh, uh, Reggie. He stopped drawing him. Yeah, you're working on Donkey Kong going forward. And then there's another character, the secret character that you're working on now, who will eventually be re revealed at some point. But uh, when I, when I thought of... The idea to have a brand new background for the show, I brought it up in a meeting with the other artists before you came on, Devin, and uh, uh, Jason here really stepped up, and he thought of the idea to turn it into a theater. So, Jason, do you want to uh, tell everybody about your experience with that? I remembered early in the series that you expressed your love for Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, and I remember oh, that yeah. I remember that theaters, uh, not just in Paper Mario, but also in Super Mario Brothers three. Uh, have been a common staple throughout the Nintendo series, or just the Mario series in general. It really helps play into the fact that uh, Miyamoto himself, the creator of, uh, of the Mario characters, sees these characters as actors and not just uh, full-on heroes. So I, I liked the idea. I thought it, I thought it meshed with everything uh, that we've set up on the show so far quite well. So I proposed the concept, and I was even thinking, hey, we can even make this a more dynamic stage where we have some moving parts on it, and we could even borrow some elements from The Muppet Show. Yeah, I remember uh, looking at other uh, stages in uh, popular culture uh, to try and get inspiration. I looked at The Muppet Show intro, and uh, what else did I look at? Ah, I'm trying to remember. I, I looked at the opening cinematic to Mario Party 2, where all the characters are on a stage, and uh, also, yeah, the, the Mario 3 intro, amongst other things, and yeah, Jason, you really stepped up and really got an awesome concept down for this background. You really, uh, you really put a lot of effort into it. I mean, what can I say? I got excited about it. Yeah, you really did. I could tell you were passionate about it. Of course, I did need you to get back to work on Princess Peach, so I was like, hmm, I do need somebody to finish this thing, and then that's where Devin came in. Yep, that's where I recommended Devin, because I know he's a uh, very good artist, uh, one that I can that am proud to call one of my peers. Oh, you flatter me. 
<laughs> yeah, I remember, uh, yeah, I just remembered the fact that you're a fantastic, uh, character artist, one, which is, uh, something that I brought up in the, uh, episode I appeared in, where I'm better at drawing characters than backgrounds. I'm trying to get better at that. So you asked um, a character artist to finish your background. Yes. <laughs> Tiny but I know that you're better at... It is a little paradoxical, but I know you're better at drawing backgrounds than I am, because you can make full il illustrations. I would know. I've commissioned a couple from you. <laughs> so, so, Devin, what was it like continuing on from where Jason left off? I honestly thought it was going to be a, a lot quicker than it turned out to be, because, like, there's a lot of different aspects that I personally wasn't quite expecting. Like, like, we really went in depth with this one just to make sure, like, there wasn't, like, any fuzzy edges or, like, like just adding extra details. Because at first it was just, like, the stage, like, the curtains and stuff and the little details on them. I'd say there was, like, flashing lights and then, and then the chairs came up and all that stuff, so. Yeah, we, we really tried to go in depth with this thing because we wanted to use it as much as possible. Yeah, I do remember uh, go coming back to you and asking, hey, can you please, like, clean up the fuzzy edges here and there? And you did. <laughs> I did. You did. Um, yeah, I remember uh, the three of us talking about uh, how to make this theater as logical as possible. I remember I even sketched uh, uh, what it would look like from the side. I don't know if we're ever going to present I think this I'm the one from who, a side view. I think I'm the one who sketched it from the side because I wanted to present the thing in layers. Like, I think, uh, we, bo see, I think I we both might have, actually. Maybe. Right. But yeah, I remember like uh, trying to imagine like, oh, how far out does the top come out? And at what point? And, and yeah. one thing we talked about was whether or not we should have uh, the horizontal curtains and the vertical curtains move. And eventually I realized it was like a, getting a little too complicated. So we should just have the horizontal uh, curtains move just to save time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to present the um, theater in layers is because I've wor I've uh, worked in theater and I've performed in theater myself. And what I experienced from the stages is that there's more than one set of curtains for each layer of scene that you're trying to make. Like the checkered floor, for example, that doesn't extend all the way back to the wall. It's actually just uh, an, an elevated platform so that people can run behind it and uh, work with moving props. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a thing, isn't it? Yeah, my thought was, just, oh, that's just the back of the stage. No, that, like, no, that, oh. that brick wall, that's supposed to be the end of the stage, but the uh, but the checkerboards were actually supposed to be in, like, an elevated platform in front of it, so it kind of it's kind of like an elevated uh, cube of sorts. That's why I wanted to present it with more than one layer of curtain. Well, I'm glad you uh, you told me that, Jason. I, I can't believe I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the more you know. Indeed. So, uh, Devin, what would you say is your favorite part about this background? I did like the little detail of drawing out the uh, power-up symbols, and I thought that was a neat little touch. Yeah, that was a nice touch. And then I'm really looking forward to seeing like the lights flashing on there. I think that's a neat little trick. I believe uh, the flashing lights are from are inspired by the ones on the stage for uh, Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Doors fights. Is that right, Jason? Yeah, that's right. It's it's actually inspired by the um, by one of the deluxe stages, because oh. the stage can actually level up and gain more audience members as you progress levels in the game. Oh, I love that game so much. If we if we don't talk about something else, I will keep talking about Thousand Year Door for the next hour. Um, <laughs> yeah, one thing I, uh, I think we talked about, with the three different power-up symbols, I, I was thinking maybe we could put in the Tanuki Leaf, but then I think we decided on doing just the Fire Flower, Mushroom, and Star, because those were the original three power-ups in the first Super Mario Brothers game. Yeah, those are the most iconic. Yeah, they are the most iconic. Plus, if you think about it, it they each one of those three power-ups can represent the three princesses in uh, in Mario, if you think about it, because Peach represents the Mushroom, Daisy the Flower, and Rosalina the Star. Oh. They're, three very, they're three important oh. figures characterized by the original three power-ups. Look at Doji and me applying this retroactive fan theorizing to Mario power-ups. Clever little man. I know. I was just about to say, dang, look at you, Jason, dispensing the knowledge. Man, what's going to happen I mean, when we introduce a fourth princess, though? Tanuki leaf. There should be one based on a tanuki leaf. Or a cape feather. 
Or I mean, um, we have Pauline. She's sort of a princess. She's a mayor. That's kind of like a princess. Well, yeah, but That's she a can get not a princess. Yeah, they can get they, they can lose their position in the most non lethal way possible. Uh, before we talk about uh, the next background, so Devin, what are some of your favorite franchises? Do you have any favorite books, TV shows, movies? Are you a part of any fandoms? Honestly, I try to keep fandoms at arm's length just because of the way, like, how rabid they can get. Case in point, me. It's like, I <laughs> will make fan art for something I like if I'm really into it, but, like, other than that, I try not to interact personally or get in any deep discussions. Just let me enjoy the thing, please. I think Star Wars is another one. Like, a lot of people will criticize it, but I have enjoyed, like, a lot of the stuff that's come out of the sequel era. Like, unfortunately, I haven't gotten around to seeing Andor. The only thing I've really, the only thing I really enjoyed from the sequel era is the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, my gosh, the Mandalorian all the way, and then uh, like Lord of the Rings is another one, like all the Tolkien stuff. You grew up on a lot of, uh, you grew up on a lot of Marvel content, didn't you? Because I know you've uh, made fan art of She Hulk and uh, Black Cat before. Yeah, yeah, so stuff like that, and uh, I think growing up, Digimon was a big one. The, the Digimon theme song was actually stuck in my head today at work. That's funny. <laughs> like, I only brought that up because I got a patron request that had to deal with that. So I took a listen, and it was like, I started drawing for it, and it, like the theme started, um, started popping up. It's like, oh, no, there it is again. <laughs> Let's see, Batman's another big one, and then Godzilla I really enjoy. Rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. Oh, my gosh. That, like, ugh. Disney, like, Disney animated movies, like, a lot of animated movies, as a matter of fact. Do you like, uh, the, the CGI movie Dinosaur, or, uh, The Good Dinosaur from Pixar? Not The Good Dinosaur so much. Dinosaur from 2000, I got really excited over as a kid, to the point where the release date, like, the original release date, May 19th, is imprinted into my brain. That's how obsessed I got with it. Okay, here, here's probably the most important question of all. If a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people leader closes its one eye, Devin, is it winking or blinking? I think it depends on... Is it grinning at the same time? I think it's... Uh... I think it depends on the scenario. Like, it depends on the facial structure of the creature, like, like the, just the gesture. Because, like, blinking is, like, less intentional. Uh, but winking, yeah, there's a bit more effort to go into that if you really think about it. Unless, like, I don't think a one eye one horse flying purple creature can afford to be, like, subtle if it's trying to get a point across and only has one eye. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. Here, here's the question: Is it a is the is the creature itself one eyed and one horned and flying, or is it a, is it an eater of things that are one eyed and one horned flying purple people? That Does is it, no, the question. The creature itself. The creature itself is all those things. That, that's what I always thought, at least. Yes, but think about it. It's a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. Yeah, but later in the song it says he eats purple people, and it sure is fine. So it's. Oh wait. Yeah. See, yeah, there we go. Got you right in your logic. It. Oh, oh now no. Now you're seeing it. Everything I know is a lie. Let's just move on to the next question. <laughs> So, Devin, uh, recently I asked you to make a, a big drawing for the latest episode of Ask Mario, for episode 19. I asked you to draw uh, the aftermath of a party at Bowser's Castle, and uh, I pretty much let you just have a lot of creative freedom with that. I think uh, it was Jason's idea to bring in the background from Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, and then you kind of just uh, went wild with it. Care to explain your process on that? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for just letting me use a background from... Uh, for like a pre-established background that saved me a lot of time, and uh, yeah, it you're was, welcome. Yeah, it was honestly just a simple question of what went wrong, like the big mystery here. It's sort of like the hangover. Like people are just walking this scenario, and they just gotta ask themselves, what the world is going on. So part of it was just making sure I knew what sort of like party streamers and stuff is just getting scattered all over. Or the place, so just a lot of like balloons and, and like air horns and stuff. And then I also took a moment to like try to research what other bits of garbage can be like tossed about. Like, uh, well, I, like for example, a bunch of spilled drinks, yeah, just Kool Aid and stuff all over the floor. 
Don't think yes, Kool Aid. That is definitely Kool Aid on the floor. Yeah. So <laughs> like just yeah, and also a whole bunch of popcorn and stuff. And then I think it was, and then there was also a little bucket of a uh, like a fried rice there because I think I was having like Panda Express at the time. That seemed like a neat little fun. And then just a bunch of like, uh, and then I think it was part way through there. I I actually drew like a the hat from the recent Super Mario games. Yeah, but then I think somewhere, I think it was you who suggested swapping that out with the uh, Flood from Super Mario Sunshine for a bit of extra, what the heck? Yeah, because uh, it, that was meant to be like a running gag, because like in an earlier episode of the show, uh, Bowser reveals that Flood is at his castle for some uh, godforsaken reason, and I thought that'd just be a funny bit of continuity, like Mario still hasn't rescued Flood from the castle. <laughs> and it, like, I, I, I can't remember if it was your idea, Devin, or mine to have Flood full of that punch. I just thought that was a great touch. <laughs> you might even say it was a great punchline. And there he goes. Uh, okay, there's and yeah, the green Koopa shell on the left. Uh, you did a great job on that, and uh, uh, I love that there we were able to put in move some of the characters like the Babam and the Cheap Cheap. Yeah, I, I also really appreciate that you put in that that high heel shoe from Super Mario Maker, and also the Karibo shoe from Mario Three. Just overall, you you did a fantastic job, dude. Oh I yeah. I also love the muddy. I also love the muddy footprints. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think a lot of that <laughs> point. Now, as soon as I ran out of usual party favors and stuff, it was just a rush to put in as many Easter eggs as I could. And let's just going through all the power ups that existed. And, like the Goomba shoe seemed like a logical choice to put in there. It's like, what damage could a Goomba do if it had the power of the of the Mario? Yes, he make a big steppy. <laughs> yeah, and then I think my favorite gag right there is I think we were talking about this part way through the process. Like, just in the back, in that middle pillar, you can see somebody scrawled on, Chili Dogs are for chumps! Just, like, yeah, you know, a quick dig at the <laughs> Sonic fandom. Because, like, in the Sonic movie, there was a whole thing about, like, Sonic not wanting to go to the Mushroom Planet. It was like, I hate mushrooms. And my thought on watching that was like, oh my gosh, if the Mario movie does include a dig about Chili Dogs, I will be upset, no matter how the shoehorned the gag is. Like they have Same to respond here, to that. Honestly, like that would okay. be amazing. <laughs> okay, going to the going to the Mario movie. I even thought of a possible place where they could shoehorn that joke in, where Mario is like in New York, in Brooklyn, where his home is supposedly, and he's and he's just pa passing by uh, one of those New York hot dog stands, and they were having a special on chili dogs, and Mario could just go, "I hate chili dogs." <laughs> 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 Devin, which, which of your drawings are your favorite? Do you have any Nintendo drawings you'd like to showcase in this video? Yeah, there was one where there was a scenario. I was doing this uh, pers this uh, art challenge in February. It was like a fear brewery. And the one of the prompts was heliophobia, the fear of the sun. And that lined up perfectly with the fact that there is a whole level where you're basically running from the sun. That is true, the angry sun from Mario 3. Yeah, exactly. Oh. oh yeah, you also did a you also did a piece of Rosalina. Excellent job on that one, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that one was uh it was doing the 6 fan arts challenge. Uh, I think that was suggested to me. Yeah, you also did one of uh Mario based on his uh retro sprite and oh, one of Bowser yeah. as well. Yeah, and I did one of Peach too. It was honestly really fascinating looking back on that just to see the original sprites design and how they contrast with their current designs. Like, I know Mario appeared previously, like, in the original Donkey Kong game, where he's got, like, the usual blue outfit, but if you look at the uh, Super Mario Bros. original game, yeah, his outfit does come across as having that red and slightly greenish-brown coloration. I think what was most interesting during that process was, like, learning the original lore that went into the game because like you know how they used to include like the little physical manuals in the game uh, like yes the game I, cartridges. I miss those I miss those so much yeah those are great yeah and like they actually gave you some backstory and I think I looked it up I think Bowser's reason for trying to conquer the Mushroom Kingdom and uh, like kidnapping Peach had less to do with like just any romantic inclinations but there was like a whole prophecy and whatnot that had to do with that and Peach was the only one who could break his spell, and like part of it 
also involved, like, turning the citizens into bricks. So yes, like, yes. So basically what happened was Bowser turned the citizens into bricks. Peach was the only one who could break his spell, so Bowser kidnapped Peach as a means of preventing that from happening. Yeah, and I also think there was a bit of lore where, like, the Goombas were, like, a traitor species? Now, like, yes, they, they were... Yes, they were traitors to the Mushroom Kingdom. They were mushrooms gone bad, essentially. Yeah, uh-huh. which is weird, because, like, they're visibly based on edible mushrooms. So maybe they had a bit of motivation. There's a fun fact in regards to Goombas. They were called... They uh, were called Karibo in Japan, and apparently that relates to chestnuts, because one of the programmers thought they looked like chestnuts. Wait a minute, Karibo? As in the Yu-Gi-Oh! monster? Yes! Oh my gosh! Yeah, that, my mind that is Karibo blown. was yeah that Karibo was based on chestnuts. Oh, my, I suddenly things it, it all makes sense now. Man, we're having our minds blown by Jason today. On so I many am occasions. the master of words. So then, Devin, uh, do you want to tell us about uh, any of your other projects, like uh, Professor Lambio and your YouTube channel? I think, like, Professor Lambio is a character I've actually had around for a while. Like, I've always intended him to use him as sort of my avatar. So do you want me to go in, like, the actual character's background as it currently stands? Sure, go for it. Okay, so, Professor Lambio Rolifus, he, uh, like, as you might suggest, is a professor. A professor. He's a naturalist in a fantasy world that is, like, Middle Earth, but it ever got to the point where, like they enter the age of exploration. Like, they start sailing the seas and discovering new lands and stuff like that. And also, like, enter the golden age of piracy. So, Lambio, he wants to go out and, like, explore, like, just sort of document all the the new creatures and monsters and stuff like that. So that'd be, that's kind of his big thing. And he ends up allying himself with pirates in order to do that. Or... Actually, something I've been considering is that maybe it's like, okay, well, the uh, well, the government's not going to fund my expedition. I'm just going to, like, join a pirate crew and work from there. So, something along those lines. And then he comes across, uh, what's the name of your other character? She, she looks like a, one of those characters from Avatar, but she's a purple pirate. Yeah, Captain Zay. I kind of like the idea for their dynamic was, like, I've been to New York, and they have these little uh, bicycle taxis, where it's like, like, the guy's on his bicycle, but he's got, like, the the cab right behind him. Like, sort of a carriage. And, like, you get in, like, he pulls the oh, carriage along. Oh, it's a bit like a... So it's a bit like a rickshaw service, but with bikes. Yeah, it's like... It's like the feeling you get, like, when you get into one of those. And, like, you're just like... Like, he knows what he's doing, but to you, it kind of looks like, Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. She knows what she's doing, but it doesn't feel like it. Mm, sort of like, almost like Captain Jack Sparrow. I was yeah, about to compare to get Ch- Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to put a link to your YouTube channel on the end screen for this video. Um, so like a lot of that, a lot of the work I've just done with the characters thus far has just been like a uh, little animatics I posted to TikTok. My like, wife, t- in particular, uh, loves your animatics, particularly the ones where it's just I hate all serial killers, but when he stabs me in the <laughs> I, I I can't even finish that. Yeah, yeah. I, br- I briefly gave like Zay an antagonist, like a Baron Septimus, this Triceratops who's trying to catch her and put her in prison, but is also kind of like like lusting after her. A sort of like a Judge Claude Frollo villain. Yeah, something along those lines. So Devin, uh, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? This is a tough question, actually, because what hasn't been said in regards to artists, like. Everybody says practice makes perfect, but you gotta know what you're practicing first. So like, yeah, you can practice all you want, but it all won't matter if you're practicing the wrong thing. Actually, uh, my my opera teacher, he used to, uh, he had something to say about that. He said, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Practice puts you into habits, and if you're practicing the wrong habits, it will become permanent. I think a lot of people ask, like, how do I start, like, drawing? Uh, it's just a big, important aspect of that. It's just learning about layers. It's like, it's literally, like, art is literally about layering. You gotta learn how to see something and break it down into basic shapes. Learn to 
look at something and then break it down in your mind into basic shapes. It's like, it's honestly a bit more complicated. In regards to just constantly getting better as an artist, you're basically going to reach a point where, if you keep at it, you're going to reach a point where you're going to start comparing yourself to other people and how far ahead they are. But it's not because you're bad, it's because your standards have gone higher because you've improved. So that, so you can't see how far you've come. It's something that I've had to remind myself of recently. Because compare yourself, instead of comparing yourself to someone who has, uh, who has basically mastered everything, compare yourself to someone who doesn't know what they're doing to begin with. And realize that you've got the fundamentals down, which means that you've gotten better and therefore so have your standards. So yeah, it's just something to help you keep motivated and confident while you're drawing. All right, well, I think that's the end of the interview. So, uh, Devin, where can people find you? I've got a lot of social media players. Like, uh, basically, all I just have to do is look up Devin Quigley Art, and that'll get you to my DeviantArt account, my Twitter, Instagram, also TikTok, and as we brought up my YouTube channel. I've also got a Tumblr. Now, I also want to plug in my Patreon real quick. I appreciate, like... Patreon support, like, it's as low as a dollar a month, and that'll get you access to, like, like stuff I'm posting before I post online, especially for my uh, art challenge months. And then, like, at certain tiers, you also get discounts for commissions. Thank you so much for your hard work you've put into the show so far. I'm really excited for the fans to see the character and uh, future characters you're going to be working on for this show, because you've been doing a great job so far, and I I'm just so excited for them to see. All right, thank you. Thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, we will talk to you guys later. See ya! Bye-bye. See ya!